Ringgit and Cents on BFM 89.9, the business station. BFM 89.9, good morning, I'm Roshan Kunison and you're listening to Ringgit and Cents, the show that's all about personal finance. Today on the show, we're going to talk about the FIRE movement. Now, FIRE stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. It's a concept of where you save up to 70% of your income in an effort to retire in your 40s or even earlier. The aim of the effort is to get 25 times your annual living expenses, or at least that's how it started. Now, to discuss this with me, I have in the studio with me, Joyce Chua, CEO of Success concept. Welcome back to the show, Joyce. Hi. I'm glad to be back as always. Now, Joyce, let's talk about the FIRE movement. What are your initial thoughts of this? Well, I thought the movement is interesting because it creates um, interest for individuals to look into their financial life and think about their retirement. The problem with most of us is we're so busy working that we really don't look into it seriously. So, yes, I like the FIRE movement, but there are also pros and cons about that particular movement, uh, which we can talk about afterwards. Yeah, it, I mean, on the surface, it sounds rather extreme, but before we get into the details and the pros and the cons, I want to get into the numbers of retirement. So, the traditional FIRE movement, you're saving 70% of your income or thereabouts in the hopes of collecting 25 times your annual expenditure. Expense. Uh, Joyce, in your opinion or when you talk to your clients, uh, what is the number? How do we calculate uh, our retirement needs? That depends on um, your own living expenses and how you want to live out your retirement uh, years. So let's just, for example, assume that your lifestyle inflation, which is uh, conservatively at 4%, because it can actually go up to even 9 or 10%, depends on what you spend on. So on the average, let's say about 4%, and you're putting your retirement nest egg in kind of a conservative portfolio, not exactly FDs, but let's look at 5% combination of EPF and and maybe some bonds and savings. And let's look at 5% uh, post-retirement nest egg. So if you're looking at 2007, 3000 kind of lifestyle, which is essentially for a single uh, adult living in, in Klang Valley from from the, the study that has been conducted, then you need um, about 1.2, 1.4. 3 million to retire with because uh, this is based on the fact that you are retiring early assuming if you're 30 years old today and you want to retire at 40 that means in 10 years time and from 40 you're off the payroll for the next 30 years you will need 1.2 million uh, in in retirement uh, 1.2 1.3 million in retirement so, but if, bef- so if, just let me break down those numbers um, these numbers are based on the fact that I'm spending 3,000 ringgit per month, I'm 30 years old, and I want to retire at 40. And mm-hmm. if that's the case, I need to have 1.3 million by the time I'm 40 years old. That's right. And that's quite soon, in 10 years' time. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of money. It is. And if you're looking at a higher end um, a basis, say 10,000 a, a month in today's money, which will mean 14, 15,000 in 10 years' time, you will need 4.6 million to about 5 million. And I thought 1.3 was a lot of money. Those are some big numbers there. Right. But we, we also have to remember that this is a 10-year horizon. So your rate of savings yeah. has got to be incredible if you right. want to justify that. Correct, because in this case, it's only 5%. And your inflation is at 4 So you're only in a money of, you know, in, in a region of 1%. So you really need to diversify your portfolio, not just put it into savings. Joyce, do you have any numbers of how much someone would have to make in order to make those goals? Let's say my monthly expenditure is 3,000 ringgit. Do you have any numbers of how much I have to be earning and saving uh, to achieve those, uh, those fire goals there? I mean, the good part is that we, if you're an employee, you're already saving 23% of your salary. So that's that's a big help. Now, you need to save an additional, possibly between 10 to 20% of that, I mean, to be conservative. Because if you're looking at a fire movement, you're asking you to save at least 50 to 70%. And, and so therefore, what's left to live on? Uh, at the present, to be more practical... Uh, on top of your EPF, ten to another tw- ten to twenty percent of savings on your own, and that's hard. But not all incomes are created equal, right? So some people are going to be earning more, some people are going to be earning less. Um, I'm hoping that someone who's spending three thousand ringgit a month is earning at least three thousand ringgit a month. But based on your numbers, it, can you give us a ballpark figure of how much someone needs to be making in income, and then you're saving that ten and twenty percent from there? Do you have a ballpark figure in mind? Actually, it's not so much of how much we earn, Roshan. It is how much we spend. 
I think um, apart from um, non-discretionary expenses, there are many things that we can control in terms of discretionary expenses. And that's what the whole FIRE movement is about. They're asking you to live frugal lives. So for someone who earns a lot, the, the, the expenses can also chalk up a lot too. So it doesn't necessarily mean that earning more meaning having to be able to save more. A person who earns 3000 can actually save 50% of his income or her income if he or she is disciplined enough and conscious enough to track the expenses and know what his goals are. So there are no ballpark figure as to how much one should earn, but my concept is more how much do you save rather than how much you earn. So you've heard the, the, the saying that you need to save first before you even spend. Uh, sure, but if we're talking about income levels, uh, before we get into the uh, more into the fire movement, it's no secret that income levels here aren't amazing, right? Mm-hmm. So when we're talking about three thousand ringgit or two thousand four hundred, if we're being realistic, mm-hmm. um, there are a lot of people in that bracket, especially young people, mm-hmm. who are pressed. And even studies from EPF's Blanjawan Ku or even Bank Nagara's Living Wage, mm-hmm. these are numbers that. Uh, show that there aren't, there isn't a lot of room, wiggle room in terms of savings. And we're not even talking about uh, discretionary expenditure. That's right. That's so, right. so there is a base income level for you to start, right? Not, I really don't believe that anyone can just start the FIRE movement. Well, um, uh, someone who, if, if you're asking me that question about how much one should be able to, spe- to, to earn before they can start the FIRE movement, then I would say that as a single adult, one should actually earn enough enough to cover his discretionary about three thousand. I think if you're living in Klang Valley, you need about three thousand ringgit or two thousand five. I mean, that's the studies that yeah, that's that about the ballpark. has been done. Yeah, then you need to add another twenty percent of that on top of uh, all the discretionary expenses. So that would mean another probably six eight hundred ringgit. So I would say generally you need to have at least. 4,000 ringgit of income in order to start the movement because about three would have gone into, uh, that is take-home money because then you have your deductions. So about three would have gone into non-discretionary expenses and take out all the discretionary expenses, you you probably would have about 800, 600 left, which you can put in, in as additional savings. But it's not yet into FIRE because FIRE movement is asking you to put 50%. So when we're saying six, 800 ringgit, that's another 20, 20% more. That's not much. Yeah, to, that's a significant yeah. gap there. And it puts into question the practicality of the FIRE movement. And I'm sure there are people who are very committed to it and and, uh, and will be successful. And if you're one of these people, let us know. Uh, tell us your story. Email us over at ringgit at bfm.my or get in touch on Twitter at ringgit and cents. Up next, we're going to talk about the pros and the cons of the FIRE movement and whether it's uh, realistic for us over here. And we're going to talk about the concept of retirement, whether that needs to change in our minds. You're tuned in to Ringgit and Sense, the show that's all about personal finance. Stay tuned. Ringgit and Sense on BFM 89.9. The Business Station. BFM 89.9, welcome back to Ring It and Sense, the show that's all about personal finance. Joining me in the studio today is Joyce Chua, CEO of Success Concepts. And we're talking about the FIRE movement, the Financial Independence Retire Early movement, Mm -hmm. and whether it's realistic. So Joyce, let's break down the pros and the cons of the FIRE movement. The obvious pro of of being involved in the FIRE movement is that you retire early. Some as early as 35. Yes, yes. But my next question is, what do you do with all that time after that? I think the fire movement does not uh, does not define retirement in the same traditional way. It's not talking about retire and do nothing, but retire into something, which I want to talk about later. Uh, so, so you do what you like. So they talk about life optimization, about, you know, if you if you love spending time with your family, then why don't you retire early? That's what happened to me. Uh, why don't you retire early and then have time with your family and then do what you like? So the second thing they talk about is about life's choices, that life is short enough that we cannot be forced into doing something that we don't like to do. So life optimization and life's choices. So those are basically very very big pros for this um, fire movement. I like that term, life optimization, mm-hmm. because it's so um, it's so simple yet so accurate. Because some people can live frugally and be happy with that. Some people just don't spend money on anything, and some people want to enjoy their lives. Um, I personally love my cup of coffee, and I do. Uh, it's a weekly thing where I go to a cafe and I enjoy that. 
that one cup while I'm journaling. You know, it's it's that quality yeah. of life situation. That's right. Uh, That's but right. I can't afford to do that every day. Mm-hmm. So optimizing between your enjoyment and a realistic sense of when you want to retire. Mm. But that's it. We've talked about how there's only so much that we can save if we've got a certain income level. Um, right. But I, I think the fire movement is talking about being frugal. Yeah, right. And so that, that, that goes into the con part for someone. I mean, for me, being frugal makes me happy. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> for a lot of people, they, don't, they, they prefer spending the money. Um, the other part is earning more. So they're talking about the fact that if you want to retire early and, and then have life optimization so that you can make life choices, uh, not just do, um, uh, not just save a lot, but earn more, maybe drive grab or do part-time, some something part-time at home. Uh, and and then the other thing that I, I like to look at FIRE as is that the, the R talks about reach a certain savings rate. They're talking about 70%, but I think 50 is enough. E talks about earning extra income, you know, as, as we've just mentioned. I means that you need to invest money. You know, we talked about 5% just now. That's just savings. So that that's, that's not going to stretch it very far. And F is actually looking at your net worth. Because a lot of us forget about looking at our net worth thinking that's too little. Therefore, um, we may end up with liabilities that may not do um, do us a favour as far as our net worth is concerned. So that, to me, ac- the acronym of FIRE would be that. Find your net worth, invest continuously, reach 50-70% or a certain savings rate that you're comfortable with and then and, and, and extra income. So you are redefining what the... Fire movement, which is not exactly a very old concept, mm. uh, you're adding a. What I like is it's a nice twist to it, mm. uh, breaking it down so that it becomes a modus operandi for your own personal finance on a realistic level. That's Be as frugal right. as you can without hating your life. <laughs> yes. Invest your money because that's the only way to really grow it in the long term. Right. Have a certain savings rate, whatever it is. Pick it and save first. Start. You start and I have, it. Yeah, yes. you and I have talked about this. Pay yourself first in your savings and then spend the rest of the money. But find something that works for you. Mm-hmm. And uh, earn extra income. Mm. So the magic of the uh, side hustle, mm-hmm. a, whether it's freelance writing or grab or any of these things, mm-hmm. on Ring and Sense, we've talked about how the single source of uh, cash flow or income isn't enough uh, necessarily. And um, wherever you can, it's good to look at alternate sources. Exactly. Because even even the I, where you invest continuously, that's also earning extra income in case you're not in case your job doesn't allow you extra time to do some moonlighting somewhere. <laughs> yeah, one of my favourite things is getting that uh, dividend payment from certain uh, stocks in Malaysia. Absolutely. It's one of my highlights of the year when you get that payment in and you're like, oh, that's, mm-hmm. uh, that's a nice little uh, bonus yeah. check. That, but what do you do with it? That's the, that's the next the, question. That's the important question. <laughs> now, Joyce, let's talk about, you were talking about new retirement, a new way to think about retirement because this is another con or a pro of the FIRE movement uh, that you retire so early. That's right. What do you do with all that extra time? Right. So, um, it's important that we have a vision of our retirement. A lot of us, when we plan for retirement, we want to retire from something. But what we fail to do is to to think about what you're going to retire into. If we're retiring early, even if we're retiring at 60 and we live long lives these days, we have at least 20 years before we finally meet our maker. So what is it that you're retiring into? What do you want to do? What is your vision? What is your vision board of your retirement uh, life? What kind of balance do you want to have? What kind of uh, work do you want to do? We haven't thought about that. We don't usually think about that until we retire, only to find that there's so much traveling to do that, that is, I mean, I'm t- after a while, you'll be tired of playing golf. Or maybe not, but you'll be tired of traveling. And, you, and, and people actually go back to work because they have not thought in, in, in entirely before they retire what they want to do, uh, what kind of job they want to what kind of work or career changes or hobbies that they want to uh, look at. So these are questions which are important uh, in the fire movement as well that has to go hand in hand. Yeah, so that's a significant concern for anyone, right? Mm. If you retire early, what are you going to do after that? Mm. There's only so much leisure and so much travel that you can do unless, I mean, maybe you enjoy that and you can do that for the rest of your life. But I personally need that productive capacity at some juncture. I need to be doing some form of productive uh, endeavor. And whether that's a different project later on, because if I've saved enough for my retirement, wherever that is, whether it's early or late, um, then that gives me a buffer to 
do different projects that I never could when I was working full time. That's right. That's the life the choices retiring part. Too. Yes, the right retiring into. Because when we have nothing, or or we we were bored and and tired of even traveling for that matter, or or just eating lunch at our own pace, when that gets into boredom health issues might arise. So it's very important, like you say, to just get our our mind still working and our capacity still at a certain level, not maybe at maximum capacity, but something that we need to do so that we don't get bored, we are not uh, tired of what we do every day. We cannot be travelling every time. I, 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 it, it, to me, it's not possible. Right. I once read a book, I think it's called The 4-Hour Work Week, where it talked about mini retirements. Mm-hmm. After a few years, you take a three-month break and have a mini retirement and do those little things that you thought that you wanted to do, like tri- perpetually travel and yes. uh, golf every day and things like that. And it allows you to test out whether you actually want to do these things. Yeah. But the concept of a mini retirement uh, interspersed throughout your career, and maybe you work till you're 60 or you're 70, could mm-hmm. be... Um, a more practical approach for those workaholics out there? Perhaps, but I think um, from from some of my readings, I know that that's what the Westerners do in, in you know, in maybe America or somewhere else, uh, where they work and then they play and then they work and they play. Now, um, I find it disruptive because that means there's a break in your career and you basically don't really climb up the, uh, the corporate ladder. And, and in Malaysia, if you do that, then you have a, um, a certain gap in your EPF accumulation or your your retirement accumulation. I'd rather have mini, vacation, uh, mini retirement once you know that you have that amount, that minimum threshold amount to retire on and then try out that mini uh, mini retirement concept you've just said. So to me, aging is not just about growing older. Uh, it's also not having um, the golden retirement. It's also it's having the best retirement that I want. So it's aging to saging, which is successful aging. Something that you do to fill your time so that you're not bored and you're still contributing to the society in a meaningful way, in a healthy way, because you're still keeping your mind uh, in check. Now, on that note, Joyce, I'd like to thank you for joining me today, as usual. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you in the studio mm-hmm. to talk about these things. Yes, and you. if you have anything to tell us or if you have any thoughts on the FIRE movement or retirement, you can email us at ringgit at bfm.my. In fact, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask future personal finance planners that come on to the show, email us over at ringgit at bfm.my or get in touch on Twitter at ringgit and sense. Now, I was speaking to Joyce Chua, CEO of Success Concepts and licensed financial planner with Principal Asset Management. This was Ringgit and Sense, the show that's all about personal finance. Up next is the 10 a.m. News Bulletin and then Enterprise. I'm Roshni Kanazan, signing off for The Morning Run, BFM 89.9. Ringgit and Sense on BFM 89.9, The Business Station.